William Cohen, writing in Bloomberg, writes about Mitt Romney's magical multi-million dollar IRA. We've touched on this, but this is a sort of a fascinating question as well. So, and, and maybe his tax returns would reveal this. Maybe his tax returns would reveal that he had to pay penalties for tax evasion. You remember in 2009, when Obama came into office, finally there was a crackdown on tax evaders who had secret Swiss bank accounts. If you had evaded taxes with a Swiss bank account in 2009, you were given a brief moratorium wherein you could pay a fine and not be subject to criminal penalties. Maybe that's on his tax returns. We don't know. But another question is his IRA. So uh, Cohen w uh, walks us through this. He writes that during Romney's tenure at Bain Capital, uh, Capital, the firm used a SEP IRA, which is a functional equivalent of a 401k retirement uh, um, program, but I think the, the law changed it now. I don't know if SEP IRAs still exist or they don't, but um, the difference would be that you're allowed to put in $30,000 annually, uh, and it's put in by the employer. And he was his own employer in some sense because he owned the company. So if he had done this during that time at Bain, he would have invested $450,000 in his SEP IRA during those years. To go from $450,000 and turn it into $102 million, as Romney claims he did, is an increase of 227 times. The question is, how did this happen? Now, there is a theory out there that what he put into his IRA were low basis, low value stocks, preferential stocks that they got from the companies they took over. If Romney put $30,000 worth of Domino's Pete stock, <coughs> pizza stock in his 1998 SEP IRA, for instance. This is one of the companies that they took over. And uh, Cohen suggests that, well, it could have been very uh, valued very low because of uh, all the, equ uh, the lack of, uh, there was very little equity there because they were, had so much debt. He says it could be worth that many more times when Domino's went public in 2004, increasing the value of that. If Romney did the same thing over and over again during the 15 years he was at Bain doing leverage buyouts, it's conceivable the $450,000 would increase greatly in value. However, not every deal at Bain worked out so well. So he says, let's say Romney was, was prescient and put into this hypothetical IRA stock only the stock of the buyout companies that did well, returning to investors a whopping 10 times their money. Very rare, but conceivable, he says. Even then, it would turn Romney's $450,000 into $4.5 million. Remember, there's $102 million in this IRA. If the money was also compounded and reinvested over the years and became, say, $10 million, that would still leave $11 million to $92 million of unexplained value in his IRA. So Cohen uh, talks about Eric Kleinbard, who's a law professor at the University of Southern California who was on Jennifer Granholm's show. And what was quite troubling to Kleinbard is that he suspected Romney may have contributed these interests to his IRA at a fraction of a market value, pennies on the dollar, and well below what he might have charged you or I. In other words, these would have been special, secret special, stock shares available only to people who were going to put them in their IRA and own the company. <laughs> when the buyouts became successful, Kleinbard proposed, the pennies on the dollar were suddenly worth real dollars. But nobody knows because of uh, the lack of Romney's disclosure here. Just one more issue that's going to dog Romney. 